Well, hey, hey, how you be? Woo! It's been a ride. I don't know about you, but I've been a little bit on a roller coaster. And this one was one of those ones where I'm like, I really don't want to get on that one because you could see in the background the distance, like the drop. However, around the bend, you couldn't see the loop-de-loops and the twist. Well, yeah, that's the ride I've been on. <laughs> I don't know about you. So today I'm going to be joined by one of my best energetic friends, a dear, dear heart and soul. Um, and we're going to be talking about how you can support yourself during this season. Hey! Yes! So let's see if... Ooh, I think I did it. I haven't been alive in a hot minute, and they have some new options. So, oh, let's see if we can add her here. She's the founder of Art of Intuition, and goodness, has so much amazing content Hi. that you can go and visit. Okay. Hey. I'm here, but I gotta flip it. There we are. <laughs> I saw your thing and it said, oh, um, support for the season. And I was like, that's so nice of her. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's me too. I was like, oh my God, that's so nice. Oh, wait, that's nice. I'm, I'm going to be I'm gonna be on that too. So yay. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's me. Hold on. What a great name for a, for a live. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's me too. Oh, okay, very cool. Yes. It's been too long. We haven't connected for a hot minute. So this will be good. I think. We've connected offline, but we haven't connected online for, gosh, probably over a year? I think so, yeah. I was looking back. It's been crazy times. Yes. Yeah. Crazy moments. You see what the eclipse is? Yeah, th this, this energy has been, oh, and it doesn't help with some of, you know, if you're into the astrology things, I'm like a Aries sun, Aries moon, Leo rising. Yeah. Nor yeah. And uh, my Chiron's in Aries too. So all the things. Well, it's all, it's all inside of us. So everything is inside of us, even all the planets. So we have to kind of keep all that in mind when we, when we start having trouble with an energy. I don't like the word trouble. We start feeling it. We want to really integrate in that energy. Like once we learn to communicate, Mercury retrograde won't bother us anymore. But until then, Mercury retrograde is absolute hell because as humans, we don't communicate. So the last mm -hmm. thing we want to do is communicate. We would rather run the other way than actually have to sit there and talk to anybody. We just don't want to do it. <laughs> so, I miss so, having these conversations. Once we <laughs> learn, <laughs> once we learn how to communicate. Okay, you will not even register when Mercury retrograde is anymore. Like you won't, it won't come on. It won't even be in your because you've integrated the planet. You you mm -hmm. learn the lesson of retrograde of, of Mercury really. Yeah. And if you're a Gemini or a Taurus, or is it Gemini and no, not a Taurus because I am a Taurus and I can't remember now. <laughs> See, I don't remember any of it. But you can be my astrology, the astrology because. I know it's not even just the eclipse. There's a lot of pulse going on, and there's a lot of astrology that's really kind of pushing humanity right now. Yeah. A lot of it. A lot, a lot, a lot. You're absolutely right. Um, and I only know enough astrology to be dangerous. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how has this season been for you? Um, I talked about it a little bit. I think the cadence of 2024 has been a lot different than the cadence of, of years prior. Uh, you know, normally we get the template for the next year around July. We it starts coming in, and the summer solstice previous we start clearing out what we can't take with us into the next year. We kind of can see the sticking points. We start getting agitated at more things, and and those are the things that have to go before we get the templates in. We start getting the templates in, so you'll start. You'll be working through, like last year, we're working through 2023, and we're getting in 2024. So then there's this mix where we're kind of starting both. But we might not have boots on the ground to actually doing 2024, integrating in the energy. We can be in the energy and know, oh, I got to do this next year. This is going to be a focus, along with everything else. I'm going to have a focus on this one thing. And then we kind of move into that energy. And we might not even get boots on the ground with 2024 till you know, April, March, where we start actually doing the work mm. but sometimes earlier 
you know, but you'll kind of know your focus. And this year it has been, and I didn't know about the eclipses. I, I don't like to say, I don't really keep up with them like I used to. So this year it felt like everything was cold. You know, like nothing was going anywhere. Everything you tried to do didn't really work. And that's just me for me. I was trying to do more lives on YouTube and everything kept screwing up. Everything kept, everything I tried to do with it, I couldn't. I, one time I totally did a stream. I don't even know where it went. It didn't go to YouTube. It didn't go to Twitch. I don't know, it went nowhere. I spent an hour. And, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it went nowhere. So um, this year has been different. And there's also a reason. If we even go back to linear, why we have a tax season in April, because that's when a lot of us really start closing out the year prior. Mm. You know, we're still dragging some stuff over because we didn't have time to finish it all. So we're still kind of tying up loose ends. You know, so you can also see human linear ties and how they energetically tie into the big picture. We start looking at, oh, most people are start tying up their, their fiscal year in April. And that's when we still can be doing some 2020. We can still be working on 2023 and trying to start 2024. But the eclipse cleared out a lot, and the eclipse will go on for weeks for people, um, some even years and months. This is a big one where it, people will feel the effects of this for a long time. And the longer we're feeling the effects, um, you know, it's going to – I've seen a lot of people say it's going to unveil a lot for people and for a lot of the collective. Yeah. So, so, so it was a big deal. And even if you're in your really human aspect, and you're, you're not into some of the topics we discussed, it still got that collective involved because it was something interesting. And they want to go outside and look at it. They want to get the glass and go outside and look at it, even if they don't give a shit about anything of the other stuff we're talking about energetically, they still had an interest in um, just the actual eclipse itself. Yeah. So are there things that folks can do, no matter where they're at, um, no matter how awoken, <laughs> how woke, <laughs> that, to help them through this season, no matter how long it's going to last for them. I'm going to ask you that question. What are you doing? Yeah, so for me, um, basic things, I'll start with those. So drinking lots more water than I normally would, because mm -hmm. that's just going to keep things flowing and help things not get stuck and help us not, like, dry out our brain cells <laughs> and all the things. So lots of water. I'm also being much more mindful about what I'm putting in my body. So like right now, I'm, I just started a, a cleanse. It's a bone broth and a hemp milkshake cleanse that I, I enjoy doing about once a year, or maybe a couple times a year, but just started that again too. Cause I realized that I was uh, carrying around a lot of stuff that and had accumulated a lot of extra stuff in my body that I wanted to release. So a you could, to be beneficial. You feel it. Yeah. You could just feel it. Because this year for me also, it's a big detox year. Yes. Body detox. Because we want to get our body vibration up. And so for, for me, I know that's been also, along with some other things, that was a theme for this year already. A lot of body stuff and, and the body detoxing. Yeah. So it's interesting that you're also feeling that same thing with the body detox thing. Yeah, so much needed. It's just been weighing me down. So I think that can help people as well. If mm -hmm. it, it feels good, you know, and, you know, cleanses aren't for everyone, but you can detox in other ways as well. It's even just, you know, giving yourself some me time and setting down all the electronics can be a way to detox in a sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. You know, it's funny because we, so get so attached to the electronics and when we set them down I know one I had a, I was doing something the other day and I completely forgot the password for my phone I was the same and it was a, a number I dreamed about like 10 years ago so it has no it, it has nothing to do with anyone's birth it's nothing to do with anything it's just a rando number I could not remember it <laughs> I couldn't get it. Like, I don't know what it is like I literally have no idea and i'm like it's so weird i've completely forgotten it and when we start to shift we'll, we'll lose all those memories because in the reality i shifted into i never had that dream i never had those numbers so i, I had no idea what it was. <laughs> <laughs> i was like i don't i have no idea like i i couldn't pull it out at all then, then i went to bed and the next morning right before i woke up the number sort of started coming back in a little bit so i get back in my phone but that happens too too and we talk about a lot of stuff we do and i think it's also 
good to understand that everyone is in a different place. Somebody went through these, this eclipse and they thought it was the best energy ever and they didn't feel anything really heavy. They didn't have any feel, they didn't feel the need to do anything, you know, cause this might be, they might be going, not even in their pre-awakening. They might haven't even gone through awakening, not even in ascension yet, which are two you know, different things, awakening and ascension. They might still be just in a, in that quasi getting interested in some different topics. And to them, this was awesome. You know, about the people in their human realm, they're just looking at it and you know and enjoying the the spectacle of it, not understanding the uh, what it's going to do to the collectives to really shake them up. So I, I think when we talk about everyone in a different, some people will be breezing and they'll watch this and go, "Boy, it was best." You know, I, I some people say it was really hard, and it, it doesn't mean you're not keeping your you're not doing the inner work if it was hard for you. Or it doesn't mean if it was easy, you've done every, you know, you don't have stuff to clean up. It's just where we are in that moment when it hits. Yeah. And when we talk about all the stuff we do, when we don't feel like doing stuff. I know we were going to do this, what, on Monday? Yeah. And I was like, I don't feel like doing this. So I asked you, and you're like, I don't feel like doing this. <laughs> yeah. I could have, I might have been able to force it, but I don't even know if I could yeah. even force it. Because, yeah, for me, it has been a tough season. This one's been really tough. Yeah. Yeah, for me, the body stuff has been hard, and yeah, I've had a lot of swelling, like swelling everywhere. Yes, I thought it was just me. I'm like, I feel like, <laughs> just, yeah. and not only like, like swelling everywhere and face swelling, and just feeling like my lips are swollen and everything just feels swollen. Um, a lot of guys were integrating in more stuff, we're detoxing more stuff. I mean. I just switched to a different type of Himalayan salt and I could feel like it was just pulling more stuff. I've been into a lot of different mouth rinses. I know you and I talked about that offline just to kind of cleanse um, and really try to purify the body more because it, it, it is just getting tougher and tougher. You don't even know what to eat anymore or put in your body anymore because everything feels like it's got stuff in it. You just look at labels and you're like, oh, okay, I can't have any of that. And then you go, you know, it's just, it can feel because you know the human society is not supporting people to go through ascension it's not supposed to right. you know so when we look at human the human systems to support us they can't they're not they're not supposed to do it. they're not designed to do that you know so it kind of puts us in we have to do a lot of research we have to really look at what can I do um, and, and then what are we not doing I, I think the eclipse to show us what can we do if we don't feel like doing it don't force it because the energy you bring it to, the energy you bring with it is how it's going to feel to everybody. Yeah, I, I like that. Looking at both sides of it, what can you do, but also don't try to force things. Just kind of flow with your energy, wherever it's taking you. Yeah, because if you get on and try to do it, you your, your words might be, I really want to be here. The frequency you're transmitting and the frequency I would have been transmitting is, I'm really tired and I really, I really don't want to be here. Yeah. And people are going to hear, that's what people hear. It's not what we say. That really doesn't mean much. It's what the frequency is of what we're, what we are saying. And if we say we want to be here and then we really don't, because yeah. we don't really feel like being here. And, yeah, and that, yeah, you really, you really can feel it. And, and then what do we do? What are we not doing? What, what can we do that we don't want to do? Yeah. That's a, the big thing the eclipse probably revealed to a lot of the collective is what should I do? I don't want to do that mm. for different reasons. That's so interesting. I can see that. Yeah. You mentioned salts. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about like if people are bath people um, putting like magnesium? or Epsom salts, those kinds of things in to help detox the body. I used to, I'm a big person, so I do a bath, I did a bath every night, and my, when my godson, he's like seven, when he visits, and you know, I'll give him a bath, and then I'll, I'll put, start putting him to bed, and I'm like, well, I'm going to take a bath, he's like, why, you're grown up, why are you taking a bath, why do you take a bath, and I'm like, what is I like to, you know, um, so I would do Epsom salt, some people do different oils. I would also do baking soda. So baking soda in with the Epsom salt really pulls out a lot of stuff. Um, but it's also to me, it, it was that. It's what it turned into was kind of just a relaxation. But when I did a lot of dream study years ago, 
a lot of people would do is kind of prepare for the night and prepare for the dream state mm -hmm. and kind of put their body in a place to receive um, the messages that that state had to offer. It was kind of like a ritual. Uh, you know, you were you were bathing, you were getting clean, you were detoxing, and you, you were then going to go to bed. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I know you could probably recommend a lot of different types of things for detox, for baths, for whatever you feel like you need to do. Some people like to just go to the ocean and just swim, you know, because of the detox is there. Even just being there, that water and hearing it um, can be so cleansing as well. Um, but yeah, the other things, um, sound therapy has been really yeah. beneficial for me. So even if you can't get yourself to hear like a, a full on sound bath, just listening to some of the subagio frequencies or other relaxation music on mm -hmm. anywhere that you listen to things, but YouTube has a bunch of them as well. And if you like the visuals, those can be cool too. Yeah. So, yeah there are so many things. Yeah. There are some of your, they're so pretty. Um, just remember with the, the frequency you listen to is the dimension you are plugging into. So if you listen to anything with, in the 400, you're in the fourth dimension, mm. 500 is fifth dimension, 600 sixth dimension, and it goes up from there. So if you're trying to pull up, you don't want to go listen to anything in the threes yeah. or, 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 but for some people who listen to something in the fours that are kind of really, their bodies embedded into the, the human dimension that the. The frequency because the human body starts off embedded in, in 300s you know that guy you're talking. looking to raise your vibration then you want to listen to something higher higher um and then you kind of feel it out if it's super agitating to you take it back down um it, if it's agitating but you can take it knowing you're clearing that's one thing if it's agitating and you know it's too much your body will tell you it's too much you know, you, we, we kind of want to keep going because we feel like if we don't, we're, we're we will try to run ourselves so hard, you know, to try to get to this next thing, get to the next reality. We want to do this. I want to do this. And we push ourselves so hard, but that really can affect our body vibration and pushes us back down into the lower reality, lower, but to the realities that we don't want because we can't, we're trying so hard, yeah. you know. You know, we're pushing it too hard and when you're always trying to clear programming and you're miserable because it's all you do it starts to affect you after a while mm. and, and then it just keeps your body vibration lower because you, you just you kind of get in the cycle of more and more more and sometimes more is not better when we're trying to kind of pull out and and really look at you know let's take a break yeah, you know, all that shit will be there when you get back. No one's gonna clear it for you. You know, I mean, it's not yeah. gonna go anywhere. I love um, that. Less is more, and sometimes you just need to slow down and not try to force things. Because we want to get to the next reality. We are all guilty of it. Even in our human, when we're in our human consciousness, we have the same thing. And to me, it's kind of almost a carryover from that. Where the one you're in is not exactly the one you want, so you want the next mm. one. Not even seeing the beauty of the one you're in. I talked to someone about this the other day, wanting she so wanted the next thing, and it's like, well, look at you're you're, you're not at the vibration for the next thing yet. Look at what can you enjoy in the reality you're in right now. It, it's not maybe your the sexiest reality you're gonna have, but a lot of our ascended realities they don't look like human reality. Yeah. But when you start to look at what does this give me? It gives me freedom to do this this freedom to do this is it exactly what I want no but there's a lot, a lot of pros to this reality that I want to enjoy those yes time you know how fast it flips and all of a sudden you just I mean there's times that we kind of know ahead like okay I know in this year I'm gonna be moving I know this year I'm gonna be doing this but sometimes you think you have six or seven more months and then you hit that vibration and the whole thing falls away and it's time for the next one and some of the ones we don't want to go do we don't want to go deal with our human stuff we don't want to go deal with clearing out parental stuff we don't want to go deal with sibling stuff but if we don't clear that stuff we can't really be we can't be spirit informed if we have to clear the crap people don't want to look at yeah you know no so I always think of people and I did the same and sometimes I didn't, even, I didn't do this for years they just go home for Christmas mm. and they go home and they deal with their family and it's miserable and they don't want to go they don't want to stay 
but every time they go, they're clearing a little bit. But they can drag that out over 15, 20, 30 years. Yeah. And then sometimes they still don't finish it. And they carry it with them even after everyone is, other people in the realities have passed away. Because they, they don't really want to ingrain themselves in really looking at it. So they, they, it's the human way to clear. A little bit, a little bit. A year later, I'll go back again for a few days and I'll deal with it. But it's a harder way to do it in a sense. Instead well, of really looking out. at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. I love that. It's like other ways that people are saying it. I think it's just like being present and, you know, uh, enjoying what you have, you know, being grateful for where you're at in this moment, but, you yeah. know, always pushing, moving forward, but not pushing too hard and honoring your energy through it all. Yeah. Honoring your energy, honoring where other people are. Yes. And if they're not where you are, then that's, something we got to look at yeah you know and and looking at are they not where we i am right now or are they not ever going to be because i mean i can't speak for you and, and but i know anyone i knew prior to my awakening and if those relationships had ended prior to my awakening not even into ascension yet just into my awakening and what people would call dark night those relationships were done and none of those people would factor into any of my higher consciousness realities that they were all gone and the people you meet kind of along the way after that start to come back in in a different way mm. and, and they've had a little more um a little more stick to them i guess but a lot of those other ones were gone and i don't know if you've noticed the same thing about anything i buttoned up prior to those things it was just the, the frequency is too far you know what i mean I mean, it was too far at that point. If they weren't going to go through any type of awakening or any type of that ascension process in that moment, we would get too far apart. Yeah. It's interesting because for me, I, it's been a reflection on a lot of connections and so many of them are just dissonant now. It's just the frequencies are off. And some of them I just don't want to let go of, but you're like, mm, it's just, it's, it's time. It's not serving me anymore. It's just, if I want to move on to the next frequency, then I get to decide, but the easier way is just to let it go. <laughs> uh, the, and it's glaring when it's there and it, it is challenging when we really don't want to let the person go. We don't want to feel bad about it. You know, we have all the human obligations regarding it. We, we feel bad. We don't want them to leave. We want them to stay. But you see a lot of that going, you know, going right now where it just keeps us tethered yeah. to those old realities. And they don't want to go with us. They're not, it's not their time yet. It's not that they're super resistant and they, they just, it's not their time. We just want everyone to go with us. We don't want to have to leave them behind. If you're still in, you're all the human realities you were in when you started. Either you're having a pause for a bit, and some people have a pause to, to do certain human things. You know, they want to get married, they want to have children. Um, you know, there are certain things they they have contracts to do, and they're just not going to awakening and ascension right now. This is not where they're going. They're doing other things. They want to have other things, and unless your reality has totally been turned upside down. This is going to be a bold statement, but you haven't realigned them yet because they're not going to look the same. I can tell you what mine looked like before and what mine looked like right now. And girl, you know, they don't look the same. I'm, You're so right. They're You're like, whoa. Look the same. And if they look the same, it's because we haven't done what we need to do. We're resisting it or we're pausing and we're we're doing other things we said we would do. We're going to get married. We're going to have children. We're going to, you know, I want to have this type of relationship. I, you know, whatever it is, there's no judgment in what anyone does. But some of us would kind of try to wake up. Like I was trying to wake up early 2000s, but I went back and I went back into human realities for another 15 years or yeah. Yeah. 15 years. It happens to a lot of people. Wow. Yeah, it does. But I, if, and, yeah, if it looks, cause I know yours don't look the same. No. Oh my goodness. Like, and you, you feel like, oh, have I been here before? But it is so completely different. This is not the same thing. <laughs> and even when you're in a similar one, 
because you go back to clear things and you'll go back to clear something. I, I've been calling them a revisit. You go back to clear something. It's not a repeat because you're in a different frequency. So now the whole reality is in the frequency that you're holding. Everyone's meeting that frequency to an extent as much as they can hold it. Everything looks different, but you're still being able to clear stuff, but you're clearing it in a higher dimensional frequency than if you're in a human frequency trying to go through it. Um, clearing it at a different frequency. So you kind of will re revisit stuff, but it has a different feeling to it. It's a different frequency to it. You're different. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of fear of going back into something. I don't want to get trapped back into that. Not understanding that we're not the same. We, we can't physically do it the same way again. It's not possible for us to do that because we are not, um, we're not the same. Yeah. You know, it, it, we can't it, we, we can't do it the same way we can't we get so afraid of going back to revisit something someone contacts you when you go well, I, I don't want to talk to them there might be a reason they're contacting you and it's not for you maybe it's just something you're supposed to do for them mm. now technically it's always going to be for us too but <laughs> we kind of get so bugged down on how someone was Especially if it's been a long time. You know, how, how somebody was five years ago might not be how somebody is right now. That's true. We don't want to restart the whole reality again, assuming they're going to be exactly the same. But understanding if we do see the same thing, then okay, we don't need to continue the reality because okay, yeah, it is the same thing. Um, a lot of this stuff during the eclipse, I feel like we're looking at a lot of that stuff. A lot of us are. Yeah. Revisit. You know, are we revisiting or am I revisiting it? Because there is a different frequency. Yeah. Am I going into it with the same frequency I was in before? Then I'm a repeat. Am I going in a, in a different frequency? Then I'm just revisit this and look at it from a different consciousness to reshape it and to really look at what it was and not what I wanted it to be. So wow. we just want it to be something and it's not supposed to be that. It, you know, we want it to be something that it's not go, ever going to be and we try to force it to be that. And the whole thing starts to, to fall away because it wasn't structured to be that. Mm. If you're in a reality that's structured to clear your programming, the minute you start clearing that programming, that reality is going to fall away. Now, we might have wanted to get married and have kids with this person, but guess what? That's not what the reality was. Right. The reality was not that. That was not a Disney, this is not a Disney movie. This was a horror movie in a sense. <laughs> a dramatic comedy. The, the, once we've done this part of it, reshaping it now, to be something else, it's not structured for that. If human realities don't restructure like that because they're built on sand, they sink away. They, they, you can't, they're not like higher line realities where you have the, the capacity to restructure them. Human realities, they, they're very, they're just kind of set how they are. The minute you clear that, that aspect, you clear that some of that program, some of them we work on for decades, years and years, um, it falls away because that was what kept it there. And the minute that frequency falls away, there's nothing for that reality to plan into anymore. But we don't like the fact they have to go. We want them to be so much more, you know, than they, they're meant to be. And you see a lot of that in the eclipses of stuff getting just pushed away because it can't hold anymore. And if we're not going to do it, our universe will be like, okay, I'll just, we'll take it away for you. Yeah. If you're not yes. going to do it yourself, we'll, I'll do it for you. And that's why the eclipse is here. Because if you're not going to do it, I'll do it. You know, I like the way I do it, but if you're not going to let it go, I'll let it go. It is no fun when the universe does it. It like feels like a crashing and burning and all the things. So no, it, I've had a lot of conversations with people about this whole revisiting and mm -hmm. what it's about and how we can ease the way for ourselves and what keeps coming up are expectations. We sometimes, like you said, we expect mm -hmm. it to be a certain way. We want it to be a certain way. And when you do that, that's when you get all of the resistance and the the chaos coming in where if you just don't have expectation. Yes. And if you don't have any expectation around it and you just kind of go with it, fulfill the contract, do the revisit and keep it moving, it can go a lot smoother. <laughs> and look and go, okay, is there can we have a reality? Let me look where everybody is right now. Can we have a reality? And is this a test? Can I hold my highest consciousness with this person? Or is this still a pit fall for me that I got to work on because this person just pisses me off and I can't do it. Is that why I'm not going to look at this person again? Because they still get to me where I cannot hold my eyes. I cannot hold love for them and understand 
end and still be in my power and say, this is still not what I want to participate in, but it doesn't mean you don't love the person. Our human thinks because we don't want to be in the reality, we don't love them. Mm. It's not that. We love ourselves and we love them, but we understand we, we're not, we can't have a reality together. There's no purpose to it. Yeah. Our consciousness is all about purpose. If you can't find a purpose in it, there's no point of being there anymore. Uh, you know, if you can't figure out, can we have a reality? So many times I would revisit and I would want it to be something else and it just wasn't going to be that. And you do get disappointed. Because we have a like you, you said perfect. We have all those expectations about what we want these realities to be, and when they're not, it is a gut punch in in a sense. Because we we feel like okay, well I've shifted, and they're going to shift, and we're all going to be able to come together and 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 huddle up, and and everyone even if they're way into their different part of their process, and everyone has a different version. I mean, ascension is technically living heaven on earth. People have different versions of what heaven is. Not everyone is going to agree what your heaven is, Cynthia, and it might not be my heaven. So could we sit there and share reality together? Maybe not, even though we might be very close in frequency and, and match at, at certain points. But if we have different versions of what it means for us to be living a heavenly reality, then no. Whereas someone that you might not be exactly matched with in frequency, if they still have that same version of what heaven is for them to me it can be a smoother transition because at least we have that same you have that same that same thing you're working toward of what would have to be and some people it's different for people yeah. it's just not the same utopia is not gonna be the same for everybody it's so true it's so true and that can be that's another expectation sometimes that you how you're experiencing the reality is going to be the same for everyone and just that reminder that no we all are experiencing this in our own way well we experience at our own frequency yes you yes you can have a reality i can remember being with a person and they were fussing and bitching the entire day and i was like oh, i had absolutely lovely day. <laughs> and everything that with the same thing happened to them and they were just because they're experiencing from a different place it's triggering different stuff for them to come up so they're in a different frequency experiencing it we're in a different frequency experiencing it same thing with the eclipse so i'm gonna say everyone's in a different place everyone's in a different frequency experiencing the same kind of thing so if we're all experiencing the same kind of thing but we're in a different frequency technically we're not experiencing the same thing right and if we assume everyone's experiencing the same thing we're doing a bit of a disservice and we're not allowing them the space to do what they need to do yeah it doesn't mean we have to stay with them I see that so often where people don't want, they don't want to let anybody go. And I was in the same way. So, you know, everything I say and, and I, everything I say is like, I did the same stuff. Right, right. Been there. We, yeah. <laughs> we, we just don't want to let these people go because we have this illusion that it has to be with them. You know, anything we think is a source of our happiness will quickly be taken away. That's it. Our universe will show us very quickly. You don't need anything but you. And if we start trying to focus on whatever that is, whether it be a job, whether it be money, well, it doesn't matter. Whether it be a certain person or just a, a certain relationship we want, we'll be shown very quickly that you don't need it. And if you keep trying to get it, we're gonna, we're gonna it's gonna be even worse. Yeah. Because our universe has no, our higher aspects don't care. It has no, It's like the same we talk about our galactic aspects. They have no attachment to humanity. They, they, they don't have that. It's a very detached, cold look at everything. But it's good when we embody those aspects because it helps cut course to things. So, so a lot of people are getting into more of their galactic aspects with the eclipses, which helps them cut course. But you also see that distance in humanity. They don't have it. Yeah. I think it's it's beneficial for us in a lot of ways, though, because, you know, people talking about self-care, self-love, which is something that I tout as well, but it's sort of that selfishness that is necessary in order for you to ascend and keep moving forward and up-level yeah. your frequency. Um, so, I don't know, I say selfish is sexy, but <laughs> it just well, helps us in moving forward. I think, I know I did a video on this months ago, and self-love, it's not screwing over somebody else. Yeah. And yeah, I think 
That's, I, I will see that I had someone I worked with years ago and we would be supposed to do something and we'd be scheduled to do it and she would be like oh the energy is too high I can't do it okay well now I gotta do the whole thing I get you need your time but that also shows us not to schedule so much stuff yeah. you know to listen well maybe I shouldn't schedule this because if I schedule it like if, if I had had an appointment that I knew I couldn't ship and if you had said no Annette, I gotta do it today I'm gonna show up on Monday and we're gonna do it um, I'll do it because I committed to do it and this, I, I know if you had an appointment you would do the same yeah. you, you know you're not gonna say oh I can't do that today because I, I I have because I've committed to it so there is also that line where we start to learn don't overcommit but if you make the commitment I'll always say if I even if I don't feel like it, I said just get me through your yeah. light body will get you through if it's a line to do even if you don't feel like it so when we look at self-care it's not being so self-absorbed that we're screwing over everyone else in the reality and we don't care what that they're having to pull the load now that doesn't mean we don't talk to people ahead of time and say you know I don't feel like I can do this can you take this on for a little while I, that's just the communication part again yes. so it's important to I mean you it's it's a beautiful way to say it when you say it it's self-care it's sexy to be into self-care and some humans will view it as selfish and that's okay too we have to be okay with that perception but we have to be honest with if I committed to something and am I gonna really throw someone else into a lot of disarray trying to do it all themselves right because I am now saying oh, I can't do it yeah uh, you know and and like I said, it took me probably five iterations of that reality with that person to finally I shut off the reality because I'm the only one doing anything. But when it was time for the glory of the reality, that she, <laughs> she, was, she could she felt fine for that. But any other of the actual grunt work, I can't make that. But if someone's taking a picture, I'm sure I can get in for that. You know, I'll be there for that. So, but those are also realities we start to see the balance in. You know, am I giving a Hundred percent all the time, and this person shows up at ten percent. Yeah, and for a while, that's okay. And that your role might be for you to be a hundred percent because you know they're going to be ten, and I'm agreeing to that, and I understand, and I'm here for that. But after a while, you might say, you know, that's not my role anymore. I, I've supported you for a year in that, and now I need you to be in it more. And if you're not, then maybe this reality can't continue. Yeah. Kind of a. I I love you but no which just gets back into being selfish I love you but I can't right, right. no so I know when we get into how we feel and so many times I, I do that myself I'm like if I don't feel like doing it do I want to do it can I do it should, should I do it am I screwing anybody else over if I don't do it or is it just okay it doesn't matter if I show up do a video today or it doesn't matter if I do a video tomorrow it doesn't matter if I go live tomorrow. probably not uh, you know no, um, but when others get involved, other energies, other humans, then it's like uh, the compassion has to come for me. The compassion, that's a good, yeah, the, that's a good word. Uh, and, and I think we have to look at the people in the reality and, and see, like, and even if it's like, okay, let me show up this one time, okay, the energy that's what we don't also overcommit or long commit. Let me do this every every Wednesday with you or let me because it might not work you might get together with them one time and go that was fun but I don't see these energies working going forward yeah you, you know like, like yeah I, I can see the importance of doing this now but I don't want to commit to doing this you know at humans we want to commit long term you know we, we want to do everything and say okay tomorrow we'll do this and the next day we'll do that and I mean I don't plan more than one thing a day we have to have a lot, a lot of space between stuff like and, and and not like over commit and go like the humans we go here to here to here to here to here and 145 I gotta be here at 230 I gotta be here and then I gotta pick up the kids and then I gotta go here and go here we don't we don't function like that we can't function like that no it's impossible it's when you get to certain frequencies it is impossible and when you try to it all starts that's when time collapse and it collapses and it just gets more crunch more crunch more crunch because we can't we have no room to move around you know when you think we have no room to we don't give it any room to breathe and we don't give it any room to shift yeah but it is important to note if we're in a re we're, we wake up and we know we are not in a good place 
we can't bring our highest aspect, what do we need to do for ourselves? Is it something we can do to shift it? And, and can we shift out of it? When we're in that place, can we? what can we do to shift ourselves out of it? Do we have something that will shift us out of it? Yeah. Is that for us? Because our body vibration, it is the most important thing. It is the most important thing. So you're 100% right. It's the most important thing is to how we feel, how our body feels, and getting our body as high as it can be. That's the most important thing we do every day for humanity. Yes. Yes. Because it activates the grids and, and, and helps lift up humanity. So it is work. And it is important. And that's why I don't work a lot with people. You know, I, I just don't anymore. And it's not because... It's just I don't want to overcommit to saying I can do something a hundred times when I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It's kind of one of those things. If you want to do it by yourself, eventually you'll someone will have to come in so you can work with someone. If you always want to be with other people, eventually you won't be able to. You're going to have the opposite of you have to do it on your own. Um. So, you know we. We have to go with the flow. And, like, if you're not, if, like, if I don't have a lot of appointments for a while, I know I'm not going to be able to do them, so there's no point. Yes. It's okay. We have to understand that, too. Everything does have a flow to it. If when we're not that, I mean, are we busy? Yes, but it's a different kind of busy. So different. I, I'm glad you said that, too, because it does change over time. As you ascend, I used to be able to do, I don't know, six, eight appointments a day for energy work or whatever it was. And nowadays, I, I've cut that way back and I reserve it just for particular people where the energies align and mesh. It's not for me to do that with everyone anymore. And, I, I, and you know, I, it's all about me being able to keep my vibe up. Yeah, because that's the most important thing. Yeah. It is the most important thing we do and people think that's not you know that's not work put that on indeed.com <laughs> i'm trying to keep my vibration really high and that means i can't really be around a lot of people and i don't really you know we always i was a group i was in and they would always we, they'd always talk about that like what is that what is that actually worth you, you know when you look at what you do do for humanity and, and how much you can help someone shift just saying something or sharing an experience, you know, with someone. And it, it, it's a massive how much you can shift someone and open somebody up. And, and they might even not in the moment know it opened up for them. And four or five years later, they'll remember that conversation and be like, yeah, that was kind of like, I remember I would take a class and I would be like, oh, I didn't do, I didn't do anything. And then I would look back on it, you know, four or five years later, boy, that was like really pivotal for me when I took that. or. Or oh, wow, that really opened a lot of stuff up for me, even though eventually I got bored with it. But when I look back, that was huge for me. Yes. But because our human wants results immediately and higher consciousness results, are they meant to come immediately? In a way, yes. But all our stuff gets in the way of them coming. So it takes a long time to work through our stuff and bring them in. And we want to rush them, you know, and, and try to get to something faster. Meet that person faster, you know, get that job I want. And then we screw up the frequency. Yeah. We're going with a different frequency than what we thought it would be. All in what do they say? Divine timing. <laughs> it's all in a it's all in a organic way. Yeah. But our human was not meant to flow in an organic way. And it's not just going with the flow. It's in being in flow with your universe, not going with somebody else's flow. Yes. You know, you're in flow. You're not going with it. Going with the flow, you're going with somebody else's flow. You're going with a human flow. You got to be in your own, your own internal flow. And if you're not sure what that is, set with yourself for a while and get into that feeling. What does it mean to be in flow with what I'm supposed to do today? And your biggest thing for the day might be going for a walk. And whew, that was... What a day, you know, and, but in our human capacity, a human would look like that and go, well, you didn't do anything today, right? right? Because to them, that's not, going for a walk is not, just not doing anything. That's not an acceptable human having a productive day, whereas for us, that could have been all we needed that day. Yes. I love all of that. I think we've given people a bunch of things they can do to help themselves through this season, no matter how long it's going to last for them. I do, hope. I do hope we have. I think we have. 
Anything else you wanna you wanna mention before we sign um, off? Um, just I just will reiterate for folks who popped on a little bit later that it's I, I love all these points that we have, but it's like everyone's at a different place, everyone's yeah. at a different frequency. Um, what's going to support you through is going to be different for everyone, but it can be as basic as simple. It can be nourishing at levels that you would think, oh, is that it? Water, detoxing, mm -hmm. compassion, self-care, self-love. Those things are just going to be foundations to help you through. Mm -hmm. Because if we can't love ourselves, we can't love anybody else. If we can't hold compassion for ourselves, you can't hold compassion for somebody else. Yes. Oh, I love that. Do you want we to? Don't, I'm actually going to pull. It was funny because I went to get a deck of cards. I had and these them out, but I didn't know. So go ahead. Uh, pull cards. Well, I, I usually do the other deck. But these, I don't know what these. These are not right away. But they're typical tarot. And these six just fell out with it. And I don't know what they are. Okay. But I am going to pull one of those. Because I feel like one of them wants to come out. Um, and it's, like I said, I normally pull from the the, the other deck, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, though I'm, um, maybe, maybe I'll do this one card that keeps sticking out. Okay. Um, okay. So this one that was sticking out, it just says, um, we're in our head, close your eyes and breathe. And I think that's good advice. You know, when you feel like it's too complicated, we're in our head. We're trying to noodle it with our head, and then there are no answers there. Close your eyes, breathe through it. And and ask for and guidance on it, and it might not be what you want to do. I so many people say that. I did it, and I didn't get an answer. No, you didn't get the one you wanted. You got an answer, but it might not be the one you all want, or hey, you didn't sit long enough. Go back and sit again, right? And you'll get an answer, but it's probably in the one you want. So we say, "Oh, I didn't get one." I do that. I still do that. So I'm like, oh, "I didn't get an answer." And I'm like, "Oh no, I got one, but I don't want to do that." So I'm pretending like I don't hear. I'm pretending like I didn't hear nothing. Like, what? I didn't hear anything. Uh, okay, so I'll pull one of these suckers, and I'll let you pull one. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you say. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, now I did get a court card. I got the King of Swords. Let me pull another one. See if I can get a little more info. Oh, okay. that's really interesting. I got the Knight of Pentacles. I got two court cards. Oh, boy. Um, oh, and then I got the Six of Cups, which is normally a, a reunion card. So what this is telling me by just feeling into it a little bit, there's a lot of people. A lot of people, I think, this, this eclipse is going to bring about. It, it, it's a lot of energies going around. There's a lot of people and a lot of people that will probably be returning. This is the returning card too. So, so I, I think it will we'll tie back into what we talked about, repeating or revisiting. Mm. It's going to dictate whether it's a repeat or, or revisit. You know, if we go in in the Knight of Pentacles, which is a more younger, older aspect of us, then we're going to get a different version. We're going to get a different, um, we're going to get a different answer. Answer than if we go in and, and actually it's funny because these are all court cards. <laughs> I just flipped them all over. More court cards, um, younger energy and older energy, and then I got. I guess they all wanted to come out. The Fool, which is starting anew, and then Ten of Cups, which is happy. Um, we dictate if it's a repeat or if it's a revisit. That's our choice. If we go in. And the old energy, it's it's a, it's a repeat. And are we going to have a benefit from it? Sure, we're going to clear. We're going to. It's always going to be a benefit to anything we do. But we're also tying us down to an old, an old timeline we've been through. Yeah. Or do we go in in a higher aspect, in a more? I mean, you can just see when you look at the cards. You know, one is look at her and how regal she looks and how she sets in her higher aspect. And this one which it just looks different. You know, you can feel the energy difference. Um, it'll depict, you know, and and the it doesn't have to difference with what the outcome is, whether you get the full, which is you're starting out anew on your own, or you get the Ten of Cups, where you're starting together and going to build a reality together. Color opposite cards, you got to be okay with either one. Yeah. Either this reality is going to go somewhere and we're going to be in more Ten of Cups energy, or we're going to be in full energy and we're going off by ourselves. And we're going to do this part of the journey on our own. And, hey, we might meet back up again in a few years or in a few months. And we'll, we'll revisit it again. 
we depict what it is. You know, we, we depict how that reality comes out. That's for us to decide. That That's for, for us to set the frequency. We set the tone. It's like when you talked earlier about sound therapy, the um, tuning forks. Yes. We're the tuning fork. Mm -hmm. We're tuning. And how we go in is how we want it to play out. And we will depict that it doesn't mean we're gonna but we have to be okay as you said beautifully earlier you can't have expectations that it's going to be set of cups it might, might be the fool right. they're both happy cards they're just one's a solitary card going off on their own with a new adventure with nothing on their back but a little knapsacky let's go and this <laughs> one's like oh we got we got family and we got a castle and <laughs> we got all our stuff and we're going to go this way they're different so even, you know, he's even looking a different way. He's looking that way, and they're looking toward each other. It, it doesn't matter. Be okay with either one. Either one, you'll know which one's aligned for you in that moment. We have to trust ourselves that we'll know. All right. Now you go. Now you go. Ah, okay. So I pulled from my self-care deck. They're really pretty little cards here. Oh, beautiful. Yes. And, and three popped out. I just was... My intention was, what are some tools that the collective could use to love up on themselves in this time energetically? So what pops first actually was aromatherapy. And even though um, um, I was like, oh, that's interesting because I haven't spoken about that for a long time, but it's one of the ways to raise your vibration very quickly. Yeah. And just about all essential oils, if that's what you're using for the aromatherapy, they're in a higher vibration in any case. So you just go work toward what gravitates and it's going to lift you up. So that's really cool. I actually like aromatherapy. I can't do candles anymore. Yes. But I do, do, I do, I love aromatherapy, but I can't do, I can't do the candle. I can do the smoke of the candles. Yeah. And then people have to be careful of what's in the candles because it can be so yeah. toxic nowadays too. But okay. yeah, if people are leaning toward candles, I'm finding beeswax is really cool. And beeswax is actually has a really high vibration as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, chanting. I hadn't thought about this, yeah. but I've been hearing, it's been coming into my realm more and more lately, but mm -hmm. it could just be you not even learning how to chant, but just whatever is coming out, using your voice, um, and helping to clear that way, expressing yourself, just like whatever comes out in the moment, oh, whatever it is. It's, um, someone, I heard someone talk about universal language the other day, and I had never heard it called that. Or light language, someone says, I'll talk light. I mean, technically, anytime you talk in a high frequency, you're talking in a light language. Some people will go straight light language, and I know I'll talk like that sometimes. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any logical sense to anybody, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but like you said, anything. It doesn't matter what comes out. But I haven't thought about chanting in forever. That's interesting. I, thought I haven't that thought about that. Right? Yeah. yeah. The third one is... Uh, Cleansing your space. And you might think of that as yeah, you know, yeah. clean the dust and whatever, purge the things, but yeah. all the spring cleaning kind of thing, but also energetically. Yeah. It's the same thing. Outside matches inside. So if you're cleaning outside, you're cleaning inside. Look at what comes up when you're cleaning. Look what you're thinking about when you're cleaning. That'll give you a good idea of what you're trying to clear. Yes. Because it's a match. It is a match. So those are, those are really good. <laughs> This, is uh, this was so much fun. Yeah, we have to start doing it. We have to start doing it more again. I do feel like uh, this year is important yeah. to get on and um, do more. I would enjoy that. that, that. Yeah, our energy will allow it. Yeah, and when it feels, when it feels right, because we kind of know when it feels when it feels right to do. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, in the interim, I'm going to kick people over to you at Art of intuition because we have so much really good content out there on all different types of topics so i would love for people to go visit and, uh, and i'm gonna start, start doing a q a on youtube once a month and i started a few i like i said one i didn't even it didn't go anywhere i don't know where, i don't know where it's stream but it, <laughs> that was a great Time my universe said, Oh, do it, don't do it today. And I was like, No, I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, okay well, it went nowhere. So <laughs> How was that? You want another one to that again, girl? Well, we're fine with that. You want to keep talking to yourself? It's funny. I titled it, uh, I put it up on YouTube anyway. I titled it the stream that no one that went nowhere. I don't know where. 
No <laughs> idea. Too funny. Um, but I am going to start doing more of a Q and A on there, and you know, so and you know, and just to mention, whenever Cynthia and I do come on, we're always open for questions. So if people want to pop questions in. I mean, we, we will really probably won't do it today, but just we can all we'll answer them the best of our ability, uh, you know, in that moment. If we can assist in any way, we're happy to do that. Um, Absolutely. I did forget to mention that today. So, yes, thank you for it. And if they want to drop any in the comments yeah. today, yeah. we will get back. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, Cynthia, what do you have going on now as far as upcoming? I know you were doing some stuff. Yes, um, I'm actually sharing more about self care. So that was, yeah. this was very apropos for me, um, and uh, much more about human design. But I'm also you'll you'll be interested to hear this. We have, I haven't shared with you offline yet, but I'm getting officially attuned for Reiki. Oh, fun! Yes. So yeah. So there's some there's some energy work still going on in the background for aligned souls. Yeah. A lot yeah. of energies, yeah. but also much more human design for the collective coming yeah. out. And Reiki is a huge key code. It really opens open people up. It's a huge key code when you hear the word. People are interested in the word. It um opens them up. Are you doing Yusui? Yes. Yusui. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Corona is fun after you do Yusui, and then Violet Flame. They're all um if they all. If that feels the line to keep going, um, I did up to black flame or violet, violet flame. That's the last one I did, but um, it, it it opens you up so much. You can just kind of play with energy. I see so many. I used to do this all the time. When people feel the energy, feel different people's energy. Yeah. See how far you can get away from someone and still feel their energy. See how far your feel goes. So many fun games um, to really just show people because people are so. So into it, even the person you would think is not into it, they're still into it. But <laughs> they are. I, I think you're right. It is a code because people always perk up. Hmm? Reiki. Oh yeah, okay. it is. A, it is about hundred percent a light code. The word. Hundred percent. You See, say I the word something every time we connect. No, I do too. I do too. <laughs> and it's funny, but it is. It, it'll it perks you up. It, it it gets people going. It it people are interested. And um, I know when I did it, I it was such a pivotal point for me. It, it can be the beginning for some people. Some people hit it more in the middle. Some people hit it, you know, it doesn't even matter. Some people might just get interested in getting it and never getting attuned. I did find getting attuned to me, for me, because uh, every time I would do it, I would also be raising my own body vibration. Exactly. <laughs> and cleansing myself. I used to do it at the hospitals years ago. There's a whole group of people that would go, we go to the hospitals. And every time I would do it, you're also clearing yourself. You know, so it's such a, it's such a huge part of so, so many people's journey. Yeah. So many people. So many people go that route. And like I said, it, it is a uh, it's phenomenal eventually you'll get to where it feels low the vibration feel too low to you and you'll bring in your own you'll you'll be bringing in your own energy and it, it'll but everyone needs to you but you it's so important and you, you know so if I think it's a great thing if you haven't even thought about Reiki but someone's interested in it go get a Reiki session yeah. you know that, that's a great way right now to, to help clear your energy Acupuncture is an, another thing that is a lot more, you know, Reiki and acupuncture right. are, you know, we stopped doing Reiki because at the hospital because it became more mainstream. Whereas after people would get chemo, they would go right into a Reiki, um, a Reiki session. It was right next to the, the um, chemotherapy on ecology wing at the hospital. Whereas we were setting up on Monday night to get people who had had chemo or people who were supporting people having chemo. But after a while it became, and so mainstream, we we kind of we didn't have to anymore, you know. So I think it is it's massive. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining all y'all. Oh, Come back, so listen fun. again and again. You'll take away whatever you need in whatever moment you need it. I'll make sure I do a little cliff notes of what everything we discussed today. But I appreciate you, oh, and I know we'll be connecting. Bye. Bye.